In this video, I'm going to demonstrate how a scatter plot can be a useful chart to produce that complements the test of the difference between two means. So that's a bit surprising because most people would create a chart like a box plot or an error bar chart to demonstrate the effects related to means. In this case, I'm going to show you that a scatter plot can be possibly more useful or at least useful in a complementary way. So this high this uh, these data that I've got here uh, are simulated data for the purpose of this demonstration. I've got sex as an independent variable uh, where I've got females and males. So if I look at the value labels, I've got females coded 1 and males coded 2. And I've got this aggression variable that is a dependent continuously scored variable and the hypothesis, just some generic hypothesis that males uh, males and females do not score equally uh, on aggression. So you can test this hypothesis with an independent sample t-test and I need to code the variable, the independent variable 1 and 2 for females and males and aggression as the dependent variable. So I'm assuming you know a t-test already. And here the effect is statistically significant, negative 7.14, p less than 0 0.001, and males have a mean aggression score of 57 and females 45. Now this looks like a very substantial effect size and people would follow that up typically with a error bar chart. It would definitely be a popular option. And I'll show you what that'll look like. Sex in the category axis, dependent variable in the variable box, and OK. And that's what that looks like. I'll just clean that up a little bit, get rid of the fill, and the border and increase the font size to 14 and 14 here and get rid of the number format Oop. get rid of the decimal places okay so this is a this could be made a little bit better as well but this is what the air bar chart looks like probably need to expand the y-axis here because it's a bit cheating making it look that huge of an effect 35 to 70 say that's probably a little more justifiable very large effect size it looks like anyway and people would usually end their analysis there now here's the scatter plot now I can create the scatter plot through this legacy dialogues option scatter simple scatter and define by putting sex in the x-axis and aggression in the y-axis. But I, from what I can tell, I can't change the x-axis so that it shows male and female, which is I, what I want in this case. So what I did is I created another variable called sex underscore r, which is just revised. And I've, got, I've literally got a string variable here. So it's a string variable that takes in letters and I've got female and male. And when I go into this graphs utility, chart builder, I can now create a scatter plot with an x-axis that has words in it. And here's the aggression dependent variable. And here's what the scatter plot is going to look like. Now look at that. Isn't that different from this error bar chart which is making things look so clean as if there's such a huge difference between males and females in aggression but when you look at it in the scatter plot format it's really a different picture now which one's accurate well they're both accurate in my opinion this one here is the most accurate i think the other chart is a little misleading in my opinion now let me just clean this up uh, and make it more comparable to the previous chart might also change the size of this so that it's square. There we go. So males and females, and let me make this one comparable as well. Oops. So males and females 
do differ in aggression levels. It's statistically significant. And I'll get to the FX size in a minute. Uh, and people would present the results like that, which shows some spectacular effect. And then when you show it in a scatter plot like this, it does not look as impressive. There's a lot of overlap in the data. There are many males who have aggression levels lower than many other females. And the reason this is arguably a more accurate representation of the data, in my opinion, is that the effect size for this analysis is not that ginormous. So in the context of testing the difference between two means, you can use Cohen's D or you can use eta squared. And I'm going to use eta squared because I think that one's more appropriate here. So options and f estimates of effect size. And here I get the partial eta squared, which is saying that it's, it says partial eta squared. It really is eta squared in this case. It's saying that 34% of the variability in aggression is due to the independent variable, sex. And when you look at this variable, he, this chart here, I don't find that actually reflects this 34%. There's still a lot of variance unaccounted for in aggression levels uh, that's not accounted for by gender. But this chart actually does tell that story to me. I do see that there's a lot more variability in the data that doesn't have anything to do with gender. And so this is a scatter plot for a ANOVA or a t-test uh, that I think accurately depicts the results. So I encourage you to consider doing this uh, or uh, look at your data. I think the other bonus here is that you can see that the variability is more substantial in males. And you see that across other studies as well. And in fact, the standard deviation was 9.4 for males and 7.18 for females. And you get to see that in these data much more clearly. Are these outliers? They're not. Uh, but you, you get a much better picture here. So I, I encourage you to explore using scatter plots in this context. I think it's a great way to visualize data. Catch you next time.